What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, the Scripture Plug Albert, and today I have the pleasure of reacting to Dr. Dan Wallace as he breaks down textual criticism and if the New Testament's reliable or not. This brother right here, amazing, one of the best in the game, one of the best scholars. So, all we can do is learn. Just get that knowledge, soak up that knowledge. And as we watch the video, I will share my thoughts on what we're watching at the end. So come on and follow your boy and let's get some learning in. We do not have any of the original manuscripts of the Bible. The originals are lost. We don't know when and we don't know by whom. What we have are copies of copies. In some instances, the copies we have are 20th generation copies. C.J. Werleman. Jesus Lied, page 41. In today's world, the integrity of the Bible is in question. People used to ask, is it true? But now they ask, is that what the Bible really said? What I want to do now is give you reasons for confidence in the scriptures. So, do we still have the original manuscripts of the New Testament? In short, no, we do not. These original manuscripts, all written on fragile papyri, the ancient world's paper, were handed over and over again to scribes who copied them all the way up until perhaps the end of the second century, so many times that the papyri would have worn out. Now this may sound alarming, but it doesn't make the Bible untrustworthy. If we want to understand New Testament reliability, there are four questions that we need to ask. The first question to think about is, how many textual variants are there? Well, there's about 140,000 words in the Greek New Testament. And the best estimate today is that there's half a million textual variants, or a little over three and a half variants per word in the Greek New Testament. Now, these numbers seem astronomical when considering these ancient manuscripts, but let's talk about two key factors, quantity and time. The reason that we have a lot of textual variants is because we have a lot of manuscripts. Consider other ancient authors. The average classical Greek writer has less than 15 copies of his works still in existence. And if you were to stack them up, they would be no more than about four feet high. And the earliest copies of their works typically date more than half a millennium after they were written. Consider now the New Testament manuscripts. The earliest manuscripts are only decades, decades from the originals. And if you were to stack every copy of every New Testament manuscript that we have on top of each other, it would be more than a mile and a quarter high. So if we're going to be skeptical about the New Testament, and we were to apply that same skepticism to other ancient Greco-Roman literature, we would just be plunged right back into the Dark Ages. What we really have is an embarrassment of riches when it comes to the New Testament text. Question two. What kinds of variants are there? Of the 500,000 or so variants that we have, more than 99% of them make no difference at all. If a word is spelled incorrectly, that counts as a variant. But there were no dictionaries in the ancient world, and words would be spelled in a variety of ways, even by the same author, many times. Word order also in Greek is a matter of emphasis rather than a matter of meaning like it is in English because Greek is a highly inflected language. So you can change the word order without changing the meaning. What we need to focus on are the one-fifth of one percent texture variants that actually affect things. This group is both meaningful and viable. That's what I mean by the one-fifth of one percent. They affect the meaning and they have a possibility of going back to the original. For example, in Mark chapter 9, Jesus is telling his disciples why they couldn't cast out a particular demon. He says this kind can only come out by prayer. Other manuscripts we have found finish the verse by adding the phrase, and fasting. This variant has implications on Christian practice, but not on doctrine. It's important, but it's not that important. Question three. What theological beliefs depend on textually suspect passages? When examining the deity of Christ, we understand that the Bible claims that Jesus is God. But Dan Brown argues in the Da Vinci Code that this belief originated from Emperor Constantine at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. Well, let's look at the evidence. The papyrus known as P66, which is a manuscript of John's Gospel and dated almost 150 years prior to the Council of Nicaea, 
clears this issue off the table with its affirmation of Jesus' deity in chapter 1. In fact, there's not a single manuscript in any language written at any time that denies the deity of Christ in John 1.1. 1, 1. Well, that's the deity of Christ. What about some other Christian beliefs? What about his virgin birth? What about the resurrection? Was Jesus really raised from the dead? Does the New Testament actually affirm that? And here's the thing I want to say, that even though some manuscripts may not affirm those doctrines in every single place, we have no manuscript that has any credibility to it that denies any essential Christian belief. And finally, question four. Is the Bible that we have today what they wrote then? In all particulars, we don't know. It's probably not identical. But in all essentials, yes. What we have today in all essentials is the very Word of God. No essential Christian belief is jeopardized by any viable variant. Amen. Yo, man, so that was Dr. Dan Wallace breaking down the reliability of the New Testament. And man, like he said, that's an abundance of riches right there. It's a beautiful thing that we have in the manner that we have, the many manuscripts that we have, and how, when it comes down to the facts of the matter, there's no theological issues with what our Bible has. Everything that's core to the belief and the foundation of Christianity is there. Sure, is there a bunch of variants? Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody going to deny that unless they're under a rock or tripping or they're lying themselves. Bunch of variants. Dr. Bar Arma would even tell you, much like Dr. Dan Wallace said, there's more variants than words in the New Testament. Crazy. But with that being said, all those variants, none of them are affecting the core doc. Not man, none of them. Even if you want to hang your hat on, oh, but the uh, corruption and yada, yada, yada. Corruption stems from foundation being busted. Foundation is still strong and the foundation is still intact. No issue. Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even if we had no scriptures, thank God we have scriptures. Even if we had no scriptures, we could still rely on that fact and the truth of the matter. So with that being said, let's look at some of these verses that aren't changed so we can really know what the scriptures are talking about. So here we're going to start in John 1.1 and we're just going to talk about some of these scriptures that again show the truth of the matter. It's not changed that no matter what scribe got wrong, they didn't get the important things wrong. So John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, not one thing, not even one thing came into being. So nothing that we have in this world has been created without the word and who is the word the word is god and here's a bigger understanding of who the word is because now we're going to get down to john 1 14. the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we saw his glory glory as the only son from the father full of grace and truth so that word who is god that created all things and apart from him nothing came into being came into flesh for us let's see why he came into flesh we're getting here to john 3 we're going to go from 12 18. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven. Who descended from heaven? The Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes will have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not judged, the one who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. So right there it is. If that's not changed, what are we talking about? And real quick, let's get into another passage when it comes to 1 Corinthians 15. One of the earliest creeds before scripture was written down, they were saying this. They were singing this to everybody, to the layman, whoever. 
when it was a struggle, when people were still getting stuff chopped off and martyred and things of like that, they were talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And look at that. Look at that. The fact of Christ's resurrection. Now I make known to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel which I preach to you, which you also receive, and which you also stand by, which you also are saved, if you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I handed down to you, as of importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared, Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. It's unfortunate because that's what we even have to this day. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all. Of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believe. So none of that is changing. The facts is still the facts. Jesus came, died for our sins, rose again, defeating death, taking our sins taking our burdens and putting on himself a spotless lamb isaiah 53 talks about this prophesies about the messiah that was coming and that messiah is jesus none of that's changed no variance when it comes to that there's not anybody talking about paul being crucified or judas or peter or whatever the case being crucified jesus was the only one he came to die for our sins because his blood is what saves us and what redeems us god himself came to sacrifice because of his love for his creation because we were fallen that's not changing no variants are changing that and that's what it's about if you made it to this point i appreciate you so very much god bless you if you want to continue to rock with your boy the ticker's been down below all the time like subscribe all that fun stuff hit that noti bell so you can be notified anytime that i drop i drop going to try anyway multiple times when it comes to these reactions live reactions or having people come and share the testimony appreciate you guys god bless